So if you remember back in February at the Miami Boat Show, we started having some trouble with the dinghy engine. Had a little bit of a fuel issue with the uh, with the dinghy. We got a dinghy fuel problem, and uh, we were just cruising out over there looking for helicopters and fun things here at the Miami Boat Show, and uh, the dinghy motor decided to quit running very well. So. So we thought that the fuel line that we used uh, that was for automobile maybe got a nick in it. So we decided to change it all out with marine double walled fuel line to see if that would fix the issue. But it didn't. So the only other choice we really had at this time was to take it to a Suzuki repair shop. Hey, this is Scott with The Space Between. I talked to you uh, a couple days ago about my Suzuki with a 25 horsepower on the back. Yeah. Um, I got it out of the water. It's on the trailer. Where am I going? <laughs> uh, right now, I'm not, at the, I'm, I, I'm not inside the shop right this second, so you got to call me in an hour and we'll get a call me in an hour or so when I get there and I can tell you when. Okay. All right. I'll give you a holler in an hour then. So we get the dinghy back from repair. We don't want to take any chances. We run a new fuel line, we put in a new fuel filter, a new gas tank, and then relaunch the boat. Now at this point, I'm blaming it on the Bahamas fuel, and I'm thinking to myself, man, I will never get gas in the Bahamas again. Little did I know, I wouldn't be getting in for treasure for a while. So I run the dinghy back to the boat. You made it. I made it. It was nice not to have to row back. Any issues? No, yeah, she's running great. She was burbling a little bit at the beginning because we had air in the lines from where we installed the fuel filter. We'll give it a little run here and see what happens. All right, digging project complete. Scratched off the project list and uh, on to that's the, next. the end of that. Hi, I'm Scott. And I'm Holly. And this is The Space Between. On vacation every single day because I love my occupation. Rejuvenate my future brand, so thankful for everything. Rejuvenating my inner light as I work hard for all I need. Open arms, embrace life, and all the way you gave to me. I work, it pays off. I'm happy now, it's paying me. Do the shit and love it on a day and leave. Say you hate your job, but you'll never leave. Never leave, but that ain't gonna be me. That ain't gonna be me. My brother called me up, said he saw me on TV. Out of the dinghy fog now. We're out of the dinghy fog and we just got back from a seven minute dinghy ride. We don't love our dinghy lingy ling <laughs> on the sailing the space between. We, we need a new dinghy ling. We took a test drive <laughs> for the first time since we've gotten our dinghy repaired by the professionals. At Precision. At Precision. The Suzuki dealer. The Suzuki repair people. And we have a fuel. It does the exact same thing it did before I took it to it. And exactly the same thing. We have we an did. air fuel or compression problem. And I've learned that where van dropped it on its ass and broke the two wells, which is we're leaking never water. now they're all leaking, so water's just pouring. So apparently we're spending a lot of money tomorrow to buy a new dinghy. A new dinghy ling. So we can dinghy. take Somebody's gonna hurt you. For the space between. So we can go on charter on So we Monday. can go on charter on Monday and take everybody where they need to be. Here's to the charter life. Here's to the charter life. The charter life. It's terribly frustrating. Oh my the God. Is, is I sat in that guy's shop and I thought, I thought to myself, okay, he changed the fuel filter, but it doesn't really look like he did anything to the fuel injection system. And it really doesn't look like he changed the high. Four, five hundred dollars? You didn't but, question but it? I took him at his word and... Does it have an electric? As a matter of fact, when he, go, when he went to show me the high pressure pump that he changed, it was in a box, and then he went like this and then put it back together and put it back on his desk. And so that was my first little. That's a Holly move right there. The Holly move. <laughs> to believe somebody at their word. That's not a Scott move right there. I know. I'm getting soft in my old age. It in the I'm, I'm wearing off on you as I was trying to say. It won't happen again. And everybody's blaming it on fuel. Have you changed the, your fuel fittings? Have you changed your fuel line? Yes, 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 yes. Brand new tank, brand new fuel fittings, brand new fuel line, all the way back to a fuel filter. Everything. 
I, I'm, I'm throwing everything I can at it, and when it doesn't work, I'm going to buy a new dinghy. This time, for real. This is ridiculous. My high field is leaking water. It has all these strands that are coming out of it. And this thing is barely 14 months old. So I'm going to have to relook at high field again, too. I'm going to look at going to an AB and getting away from high field. I'm not sure. It's just, I, I just don't think that a dinghy. And I've got two cracked welds in the rear. <laughs> not making very good resale value out of it. Huh? <laughs> I'm not going to get any resale value out of it. I'm going to make high field replace the. It's got a three year warranty. Oh. Don't go far. He's back. The cover is off. Probably not a good sign. And it just died again. And he's parking it over there. Probably means we're getting a new dinghy. So we are, I can't, at Nautical Ventures in Dania. Where's the dinghy? Oh. All right. Be safe. I'm not going to give you the camera to take with you in this weather. So all Nautical Ventures had was a 360 instead of a 380, but it still had the Yamaha 25 on it. It ran pretty good. And I know how everyone loves Yamaha, but I'm not a fan. Two cylinders firing simultaneously with a counterweight makes for a really rough running engine. But it did the trip for the charter, we buttoned it up, and now we head back to Lauderdale. Warning, pissed off dinghy owner. So now that we're back from the Bahamas, I have to take the dinghy out of the water once again. Only this time, I called Suzuki directly and got really ugly with them. Then they tell me I have to take it back to Precision so that he can do the work right, but that they're gonna send their rep over there to test run it and make sure that the engine's repaired correctly this time. So in the meantime, we have to deal with the high field issue. So I call Tom over at high field. He says get in touch with Domenico. Next thing I know, I got a new boat. So long story long, high field inspected it, saw the cracks, saw the issues that we were having and like I said I got a new dinghy however since I was the one that put the Suzuki on it I'm the one that has to swap everything out sign on the dotted line yeah all right that's all that's, that's, it? that's yours okay and then uh, she'll send me the origin yeah paperwork. the DMSO etc we pick up the board but they have to send us right 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 Domenico, hey. I appreciate all your help. Oh. Yes. Thank you. That's three dinghies in three weeks. Your, your, your patience. <laughs> we want to make sure we tell everybody how yeah. you guys took care of us. So, see Domenico. <laughs> yeah, when you want your dinghy at Nautical Ventures, make sure you come see my man, yeah. Domenico. Third dinghy. Three weeks. Well, four weeks. Something like that. It's all running together. So, Nautical Ventures and Highfield, Tom over at Highfield, took really good care of us. Um, they stood behind their product, unlike a certain engine manufacturer that blamed it on all on me. But anyway, um, so what we're gonna do now is we have the new 380 all buckled up back there and we're going to take her back to Sailor Man and we're going to swap the Suzuki stuff over on her and see what uh, see how it goes but fixing or taking responsibility for the cracks in the back of the boat um, you know it, it they went 
Highfield and Nautical Ventures went over and above their, uh, you know, their duties as far as I'm concerned. So, thumbs up. And now for the fun part. Like I said, since I chose a Suzuki and to put the center console in and I rigged the last one, I am responsible for moving the engine and center console over to the new one. I know what a lot of you are thinking right now. What is he doing putting the Suzuki back on the new dinghy? That doesn't make sense. Well, it kind of does, and we'll get into that a little bit later in the video. Now, for those of you who have never built a dinghy from scratch, there's a lot involved. We are here at Sailor Man amongst the mosquitoes. Which put everything on here onto the brand new and improved here. All right, step number one was inflate the dinghy. What? I guess step number one was inflate the dinghy. Step number two. I'm gonna get this crap apart without. Does the engine go first? I, I don't know. Oh. Okay. So step number one is battery. So after removing and disconnecting the battery, I pull the wires out that go to the lights. Then I undo the bolts that are holding the engine to the transom. Undo seat. Because the seat needs to go with it. Because everything's connected to the seat, so we've got to get the torques out. So somehow we have to lift the engine and the seat all together from there to there. Anybody else sees a problem with this? Hubs. This is gonna jack the forklift. You can do all things, folks. So uh, went to remove the seat, only to find out that the seat bolts had stainless steel rusted in with aluminum and had to drill the heads off of them. Now it's time to take Holly out of her comfort zone. After a little persuading, I got her to drive the forklift for me. And while this is definitely outside of her comfort zone, she didn't throw a fit on the ground and cry about it. So we lift the seat out onto the side of the dinghy and then while I'm holding the seat up, she backs or pulls the dinghy out and we set the seat on the ground because we got to find a better way to do this. So setting up a sling on the forklift at the exact space needed from the engine decided that I would lift everything as one unit. And so up it goes. It actually worked out pretty well. We lifted the motor and the console and then we eased the forklift forward Now, not to be complaining about the forklift, but to give Holly her due, this thing doesn't drive well. The second you let off on the brake, it tries to walk forward on you, and then it'll stop until you rev up the engine. So it's not the easiest of forks to drive. And then we ease the engine and center console straight down into the new dinghy. Now 
Now with the console seated on the floor, I go around to the rear and grab the back of the motor and lift up on it. As Holly slowly brings the forks down, I align the saddle with the transom and Bob's your uncle. Well, he's Holly's uncle anyway. Now I get the motor lined up on the transom where I want it while the fork is still holding the weight of the motor. Back up. The only thing left to do is tighten down the bolts, drop the forks, and take the straps off. We did it. I have to give credit where credit's due. Holly, you did a great job and couldn't ask for a better helper. Thanks so much. Couldn't have done it without you. Literally, Sailor Man wasn't open yet. I couldn't have done it without you. So a wise man once told me to work smarter, not harder. So we have relocated the dinghy to shade. And a pool. And a pool. So when we overheat, we can just jump in. Like we've already done. So now, step number 706. 62. We are wiring and no, what are we doing? Just mounting everything back, putting the fuel system back together. Um, you know, there's a lot to rigging a dinghy, especially the one with the center console. We're gonna, I gotta find the bolts that go on the ground, then I gotta find the bolts that are in the ground that are underneath the. It's a whole lot of. Okay. A whole lot of not fun. Gotta get it done. And the goal today is to get it back on the back of the boat. And the one that's currently on the back of the boat, back on the trailer. And up for sale. In deja vu. I've been here before. Only this time, I'm not hoping for the same outcome. Now that's Quinn behind me there. He brought the other new dinghy, the 360 with the Yamaha on it, so we could put it on the trailer as he took this one back to the boat. I lost my Holly helper and had to enlist my son's help because we were leaving tomorrow on a charter and my wife was not even close to being ready because I'd tied her up with this new dinghy deal. Dinghy number one is back in action. Dingy number three. Oh, dingy number three, right. Dingy number three is in action. <laughs> with dingy number one's pieces. Let's go with that. So after a long test ride down the canals for about three hours and then getting her on plane out in the river, we hoisted her back on board and called it done, finally. So exactly 12 hours and 15 minutes after we got here this morning, we are back here putting dinghy number dose. Dinghy number two for sale at Sailor Man. Cleaning her up. And we got a big dinghy number one. And return her to Highfield. So this dinghy got a new cover. What we doing? So I had to alter it so that it would fit in the lift properly Cutting with the slings. And I sewed some reinforcement in so that this one couldn't tear. Did you get your trusty helper? Trusty? I don't know about all that. But I have a helper whether I like it or not. So we got our angry vagina. Okay, dog. <laughs> Sewed up. Now for the big question. Why would I possibly go back to Suzuki after all the troubles I've had? Well, there were several factors in that. And one of the biggest was Tiller versus the center console. After running around in the 360 with the Yamaha on it, I came to quite a few conclusions. While there is a weight savings over the center console, I really miss my electric start. My poor elbows just can't take that manual start of that Yamaha. And Holly, at five foot tall and 100 pounds soaking wet, 
could not raise the engine or manage the pull start on the Yamaha if something were to happen to me. The other big thing is the steering wheel over the tiller. The steering wheel is so much more maneuverable. Now that brings us to the debate Yamaha versus Suzuki. So the Yamaha is a two-cylinder simultaneously firing piston that just runs rough compared to the Suzuki. And the Suzuki is a very smooth running three-cylinder that is also far quieter than the Yamaha. Now let's get to the meat and potatoes of these two engines. The Yamaha is a 25 horsepower 432 cc that is based off of their 20 horsepower case just souped up to make the 25 horsepower where the Suzuki is actually a downgraded 30 horsepower down to 25 489 cc motor block and the long and short of it is the Suzuki's got way more power than the Yamaha with six people it took the Yamaha almost 10 seconds to get on plane where the Suzuki with the same six people can get on plane in less than six seconds and for those of you who are going to scream how much lighter the Yamaha is it's simply not the case the Yamaha 25 horsepower with a tiller, no electric start, and manual tilt weighs 143 pounds. The Suzuki with electric start, with power tilt, weighs 163 pounds. Now granted you have to add the 64 pounds for the console and the steering and the remote and the 6 pounds for the battery, but still all in all I would way prefer the console over the tiller. But we still haven't answered the question, why would I possibly trust Suzuki again? Well, I don't. But I do trust myself. And armed with a service manual and enough spare parts to keep her running and a knowledge of this engine now, I think I've got a pretty good handle on it. But would I recommend a Suzuki to someone with no motor knowledge and just expecting the engine to run? Never. But then again, I don't recommend the Yamaha either. I hope this answered some questions and you enjoyed this episode. Leave me a comment below if you've got any other questions.